Having normal levels of vitamin D is important to our overall health, but scientists are discovering more and more data that solidifies the link between vitamin D and people living with MS. Vitamin D has been implicated as a potential risk factor for MS for, for many years. And so it's been very intriguing over the last years to see an accumulated uh, body of knowledge emerging that relate to how vitamin D, when present at lower levels versus higher levels, might be associated with problems with immune regulation. And uh, the initial observation in the court that we've been studying in Canada is that the level of vitamin D measured at the time of the initial episode when a child presents is very related to the diagnosis of MS versus non-MS. Not only is there the association with low and high, it's actually also a graded likelihood of MS diagnosis. If you took the levels of vitamin D and divided them into groups of four, so the, the lowest group, a medium low group, a group almost you know around the, the values we think of as being healthy and a group whose levels were healthy or above, the uh, children in that lowest level, 30% of them have been diagnosed with MS so far versus only 6% that were in the top level. We look at the vitamin D intake first in over 200,000 women that we have been following regularly since the 1976. And we found that those women who took vitamin D supplement regularly had a 40% lower risk of developing MS than women who didn't take supplement. Now we are looking at people who already have MS, or at least had the first demyelinating event, the first episode that suggests MS. And what is interesting is that we are seeing that vitamin D insufficiency, so having low level of vitamin D, is a strong risk factor for having a second episode. When you follow over time uh, individual with low vitamin D level, you see that uh, their progression of MS tend to be faster, they have more MRI lesions, and they have a faster loss of even of the brain mass. This is, of course, extremely exciting because it suggests that vitamin D, that is a very safe and simple intervention, could actually change the course of MS in many people. There are some important questions as to how much is necessary. Should we be dosing people based on a dose or based on the level that a dose achieves in an individual over time? And how much, in fact, is the right amount to take for a given person is one of the important questions that remain in the field. A thousand international units, five thousand, ten thousand, some people take 50,000 once a week. So we feel there's a huge need to actually study this properly. So uh, we're about to commence a proper randomized controlled trial that looks at the four doses of vitamin D to see if we can see differences in time to a relapse or time to new MRI brain lesions. And taking too little or too much could actually be bad. Now we've done a, a study it only had about 23 MS patients in it, so it was very small. But we were giving them either 1,000 units or 6,000 units. What actually happened, um, it was a small trial, was that the people who were taking 1,000 units actually did better. They did quite significantly better. All the relapses we saw in the study were in the higher dose, and uh, the higher dose patients also tended to have more disability progression. I don't want to say that taking high doses of vitamin D is bad, the study is too small to really conclude that, but it asks questions. The current recommendation is based on trying to prevent a condition called rickets, so that if people as a population go below a certain level, they will develop a very bad bone disease as they grow up as kids. I think it's extremely important, particularly in children whose bones are actively developing, uh, that there can be risks of too much. There's not a lot of evidence that mega doses are actually superior um, and I think the, the, the current philosophy is that really we should look at this properly. I think all uh, vitamin D supplementation that is above the standard recommended dose should be in concert with a physician. One of the most common questions is if a parent has MS, should they be very stringent about giving their children vitamin D? And um, I think this, the straightforward answer to that is absolutely yes. If you're a believer of the epidemiology evidence, there's a fair suggestion that your MS risk is determined during childhood or early adolescence. I do encourage families to take their vitamin D, and on, again, I'll remind people that that's actually the current recommendation is that all families should be taking vitamin D. Memory problems and slowness in processing information are cognitive challenges that are associated with MS. Next up, we'll find out what new studies are telling us about these issues.